Berlin is a city like no other. It bears the weight of history and the scars of the past. But it also has a youthfulness. A resurgent energy. A creativity. It is a city that is constantly evolving and reinventing itself. As a driver, you always have to be ready to push yourself that bit further. To be creative, to evolve and reinvent. If you stand still for a second, you've already lost. You have to be prepared to leave the past behind and create a new future. Berlin. Ich bin bereit. Hey, I'm Pascal Wehrlein and welcome to Street Racers. We are at my home race in the capital of Germany. This is Berlin, round 10 of the championship. It's my turn to control the show and we've got a lot going on, so let's check out what's coming your way. Oh. It's time to get your shades on and enter the glitzy world of the Cannes Film Festival, which was the venue for the premiere of Formula E's new film, And We Go Green. We'll be catching up with the Formula E commentator Jack Nichols and former Formula E driver Tom Blomqvist as they discuss what went down at the Berlin qualifying session. Berlin is home to one of the best electronic music scenes in the world. So we sent Audi Sport driver Daniel Abt off into a darkened DJ booth to find out if he can mix it with the pros. Plus, the historic Tempelhof Airport was a location for the next installment of the championship and we'll have all the action from round 10 at the Berlin e -Prix. But first, let's take a look back at the season so far. We've seen electric showdowns in nine stunning cities. It's been full of drama, spectacular action, and unpredictable racing. Antonio Felix da Costa got BMW i Andretti off to a great start with the first win of the season in Saudi Arabia. He was flying again in round two in Marrakesh, but after a collision with his teammate Alexander Sims, Mahindra Racing's Jerome D'Ambrosio swept through to take the top step of the podium. Santiago, Chile was raced in record temperatures, and it was Sam Bird who sweated least to take home the full 25 points for Envision Virgin Racing. Round four in Mexico came down to a final lap battle between Pascal Verlein and Lucas de Grassi. Hong Kong was next, and the damp conditions led to a bumper-to-bumper -bumper battle between Sam Bird and Andre Lauderer. A post-race penalty for Sam handed Venturi's Eduardo Mortara his first ever win. Sanya China and reigning champion Jean-Eric Verne finally got his and Diaz Tachita's first win of the season. <laughs> The historic city of Rome saw Mitch Evans finally take Jaguar Racing's first ever Formula E win to much relief and delight of his team. Formula E's first ever properly wet race took place in Paris and it was Robin Fryens who handled the conditions best to take Envision Virgin Racing's second win. Eight races, eight different winners, and it wasn't until round nine on the legendary streets of Monaco where one of the drivers finally put a stamp on the season, and it had to be the man defending his title. Jev started on pole position and drove flawlessly to take his second win of the campaign. That win puts him at the top of the standings, but by just a single point over teammate Andre Lauderer, who despite not securing his first win, has scored points consistently. Robin Freund sits in third, another five points back, with Antonio Felix da Costa in fourth, and Audi Sports Lucas de Grassi on the same points in fifth. But now it's time for a showdown in Berlin. Round 10, Germany. An industrial and motorsports powerhouse. 
a home race for reigning team champs Audi and auto giant BMW. With the mighty Porsche and Mercedes joining the championship next season, the German teams are cranking up the volume. Historic Tempelhof Airport is where the drivers will do battle here in Berlin. So let's take a closer look at its concrete runways where the track is laid out. Join me on a track walk lap in Berlin. So here we see turn one. There's a really good overtaking opportunity there because there's a long straight before. And then it's a very long left-hand corner. Um, it feels like it never ends. It has actually two apex, or you see different driving styles here, one apex or two apex, but it has a very long and, and slow speed left-hand corner. After that first turn on the track, there's a switchback through turns two and three, then a short burst down onto the next corner. Okay, so we are now here in turn four. It's a really important corner because it's followed by a very long straight. Everything you gain here on exit will be double at the end of the straight. So very important to have a good car here. The long straight leads down to one of the best overtaking opportunities on the circuit. So we are in turn six now. Um, as you can see, another long straight behind us. Good opportunity to overtake here. And the normal line would be here to the left. But we are walking now through the attack zone where you can get some extra power. Most of the races we use it twice for four minutes. You lose a bit of time, so strategy is important. We are going to discuss it uh, during the race, uh, what the engineers are thinking when is the best time, but uh, that's a crucial part of the race. Turn seven is one of the fastest corners on the circuit and will really put the tires under a lot of stress on this really abrasive concrete surface. We're in turn nine here, a very slow right-hand corner. Another good opportunity here to overtake on braking. And it's a slow speed corner, so important to have a good rotating car here. And then we are heading already into the, the final sector and the last corner. We are in the last corner now, which is a left-hand corner. Um, very important here as well to have a good exit because it's followed by a long straight and the start-finish line is, is quite far ahead. So good exit here. Um, we will get very close to that exit wall here just to optimize the minimum speed and get all the speed through the exit. That concludes already one lap in Berlin. In qualification, Jean-Éric Verne missed out on the top six Super Bowl and will start down in ninth place. It was even worse for teammate André Lauderer, who failed to start his lap in time and will start right at the back of the grid. Our host, Pascal Verline, has a lot to do as he will start in 10th place. He'll need to race hard to make it onto the podium. In the Super Bowl shootout, the Audi fans were in full swing as Lucas Degrassi went third fastest. The Nissan E-Dams car of Sebastian Buemi was looking good and he went quickest with only one driver to run. HWA Race Lab Stoffel Van Dorn couldn't quite do enough as he posted the second fastest time of the session but still sits on the front row alongside a happy Sebastian Buemi who seems to like it here in Berlin having won here twice before. So we've just had qualifying for the Berlin E-Prix and it is Sebastian Buemi on pole position. I'm joined by Tom Blomquist, BMW factory driver and former Formula E driver to have a little chat about it. Buemi was in a class of his own, almost four tenths of a second quicker than anyone else. Now this has been extremely quick all season, you know. The torque up and down the pit lane there, they really have something special in that car over a lap. But the question is, you know, can they convert that? They haven't been able to so far this season. HWA second and fourth for Stoffel Van Dorn and Gary Papit. That's the team that's going to become Mercedes next year. That's a big result in Germany for them. I think it's a bit of relief as well, you know, for the team. The car is extremely quick, clearly, but maybe a question mark over their race pace. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Championship leader jean eric Verne did an OK job. He's starting inside the top 10, but his teammate Andre Lotterer at DS de Chita, who's second in the championship, just a point behind, disaster. They, they didn't get to start the lap. You know, catastrophe really for, for Andre. You know, watching that qualifying, you saw Lucas was the kind of the guy in front of the, those two Tachita cars. 
and it was like a three car train almost, you know, over a qualifying just because they were so nervous to, to miss the cut and Andre unfortunately, you know, missed it. I mean, was Lucas playing around? We didn't see it. When it comes down to crunch time in the championship, those are the games that get played. Now here in Berlin, Boemi on pole, can you see anyone else winning? I, You'd be a brave guy to, to call someone else. So who are you going to call? You would be. Where's, where's Lucas? Lucas is in third. third. I think he'll be a threat. So we're going back to a good old fashioned Boemi Degrassi. I think Boemi Degrassi. Um, and then you've got Jev and also Antonio near sister BMW down in eight. But yeah, you've, you've got to put a strong bet on uh, Sebastian yeah. to pull off the Nissan's first win. So it is Sebastian Boemi that will be starting on pole position then for the Berlin E Prix. Can he take his first win in almost two years? We'll see if Buemi can convert pole position into his and Nissan's first win of the season later in the show. Before we get on with my home race, let's check out what happened at the premiere of the Formula E documentary. During the last season of racing, Formula E CEO Alejandro Agag commissioned award-winning filmmaker Fisher Stevens and Oscar winner Leonardo DiCaprio to make a film all about Formula E, and its debut was made at the prestigious Cannes Film Festival on the French Riviera. And we go green in Hong Kong! Green in New York City, green. It's going to be a steep learning curve, but I'm pretty excited. The next race, you do a mistake. People start thinking you're not good anymore. Like I say, I'm not an environmentalist, I'm a racing man, but I do worry about the environment. So if I can put both together, fantastic. You know, Fisher had made several films with Leonardo DiCaprio on the environment. I, you know, I wanted to help Fisher in that, in any way I could about the environment. So you've got, you've got two things here. You've got the environment and a really exciting, dynamic sport. You bring the two together into a film, and it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. It wasn't acting as such, it was just be yourself, carry on doing your day-to-day -day job and we will capture you in that kind of light. But I know that Leonardo, he was very busy behind the scenes and he's been a real spokesman for the championship and he's been extremely important in getting us here today. When I heard about this project especially, um, I was really excited because I've seen before the flood that Fisher did. I think it's a very important marker for Formula E, it's uh, as important, I would say, as the first race, as important as manufacturers joining. It's just adding value to this championship that has a very, very bright future. It's awesome to, to present this in Cannes. It's a huge honor. We feel like movie stars for once in our lives. It's pretty special. We're going to go up the red carpet later on and uh, hope uh, it's going to be a great success. Well, I'm so proud to, to have joined a championship that could bring all of this together. First of all, a fantastic platform for racing, uh, for you know, pure sport. Another the platform which is to bring a message of sustainability and to raise awareness uh, to the problem of global warming. That's not something I had the opportunity to do in the, in the past. To be here in Canada, the world premiere of a movie about this championship is something that no one really expected. And uh, I think, it, you know, it blows the mind of many people, cool. myself included. Straight from the glamour of the French Riviera, we make a U-turn as we dive deep into the underground of Berlin with Audi sport driver Daniel Apt. What's up guys, I'm in Berlin for my home race. So before we hit the track, actually, I'm invited to join two DJs called Panpot and they're gonna show me how to do some DJ stuff, put on some techno music. So let's meet them and have some fun. Berlin is renowned for its nightlife, and in particular, its techno scene, with some of the best underground clubs anywhere in the world. Together, Tassilo and Thomas make up headline at Panpot, and they've been playing together at some of the biggest nights in Berlin for nearly 15 years. Hey guys! Hey, how are you doing? I'm Daniel, hi. That's nice, nice to meet you. Hi. Nice, nice. nice setting here, huh? Yeah, yeah. I heard yeah. I'm gonna get a... A lesson today. DJ lesson, yeah. We're going to show you a little bit how we play, how it works with DJing. What we uh, planned is actually we just show you how to basically um, beat match two tracks. I feel it already. <laughs> I already <laughs> feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And when you think you have got it, you just stay on it. Yes, 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 yes. 
So last year you won here in Berlin? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, last year we had the, the best day ever because we were in pole position. We had the fastest lap. We were leading all, wow. all, all, we were leading all laps and uh, we won the race. Plus my teammate was P2. So yeah. it's no, impossible no. to do better, but yeah. at wow. least we know where yeah. the bar is set and what we wow. need to achieve. Yeah. yeah, so obviously you guys DJ together. I also have a teammate in racing, but we are still competitors on yeah. track, so there's still some rivalry. Is there some rivalry between you guys or is it just about being together and getting the best sound out? It's more about kind of creating something together, yeah. being a team. When you're standing in the club and you're mixing and I get a better response from the crowd, it's obviously something I enjoy myself, <laughs> you know. And same for him, but you know, you're kind of challenging each other and, and, and as you said, you know, like you're playing a track and I'm thinking, okay, you know, I got to okay. top that, I need to be kind of, you know, yeah, that's, that's basically the same what we also have in, in, in racing. You know, you have a, you have someone you compare yourself to all exactly. the time. Yeah. Uh, and if someone does something better, even if it's just the corner, you look at it and you say, okay, how do I achieve that I also? Think, yeah. I think uh, it's, it's important, also, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's yes. just like kind of working together, but also being like kind of competing, you know? Obviously for us, our big motivation is like being able to play for a crowd, you know? like Is, is that something you realize when you are like racing yes uh, especially in formula e you realize that because you don't have the car noise so much that's so oh, yeah, so the people are cheering and you can hear that so that's that's super cool something yes. for us it's the same i mean of course we love the sport we love driving yeah. but if there's no one watching and no fans supporting us then what are we there for you know yeah, so in the end true. everything we do is for the fans to get people excited yeah. so i think it's very very similar yeah, yeah, yeah cool yeah, yeah, true, cool. i can totally okay let's go out I'm ready. Yeah, let's do this <laughs> you got a dj tonight so <laughs> And just like that, it's time to go racing and electrify the iconic Tempelhof Airport. Hi guys, we are here in the starting grid, starting from P10. Uh, not a great qualifying, but uh, still a lot to play in, in the race. Uh, hopefully we can have a good one and see you later. For the second time this season, Sebastian Buemi. Alongside him on the front row is Stoffel van Dorn for HWA Race Lab. Lucas de Grassi lining up in third, and he's looking strong. All five lights are on, and we go green in Berlin. Decent start from Buemi there. He'll have the inside line on the run down towards the first corner. De Grassi in the Audi tries to get up the inside. Quite conservative on the brakes, and van Dorn slots in. There's the attack from Alex Lynn of the inside of Gary Paffitt. Paffitt goes all the way around the outside, though, and keeps hold of that fourth place just about. Sebastian Buemi has managed to hold the lead. Verlein locks up. Oh, that was close because Verlein and uh, Roland are now absolutely side by side. Jeff ahead. Gap, point five. Roland behind, point four. And there comes Degrassi into six. Lucas Degrassi up the inside and that is second place for the Brazilian. He gets past Stoffel van Dorn. A straightforward maneuver there. In Pascal Verlein in ninth place, so he made one position off the start. There's the move from Lin. Alex Lin up the inside, is he gonna feed? Paffitt into the wall a little bit, Apt goes through as well, so Gary Paffitt uses two places, and there goes De Costa as well. So Paffitt loses three places in two corners. De Grassi up the inside, De Grassi into the lead in Berlin. Does the move into turn six, and now let's see what the Audi powertrain can do. Okay, situation is De Grassi over to Buemi for the lead. It looks like Buemi is holding the train. Okay, so let's fight if you can. Oh, there's a look. Vern up the inside of Paffitt. Can't quite get it done. Now they're coming to the quick left-hander at seven. And through goes Vern. That is Jean-Eric Vern now up into seventh position. Paffitt down to eighth. And he's got Pascal Verlein right behind him. You had 1% more energy than Paffitt in front. Oh, interesting. Vern's taken the attack mode and then slices back through and goes up the inside of Paffitt. So that was 
decisive stuff from Vern, and that has almost not cost him any places where it could have done before. And here comes a look at the inside from Roland. Roland decides to pounce on Pascal Beerline. They have a bit of rubbing, oh. and he's bumped into the wall, and Sims goes through as well. Yeah, he just pushed me against the wall. Yeah, I've seen TVs, yeah. Here he comes into turn six. Antonio Felix Acosta to the inside of Buemi, and Buemi cleverly takes the attack mode activation at the same time as does Stoffel van Dorn, and they just come out in front of the Audi of Daniel Apt. And then through comes, oh, Veerlein turning in. A clunk with Paffi. And that allows Mortara in the Venturi into the fight behind and Andre Lotterer. They are all consuming so much energy, I can't deal with that. Into the left-hander of six. And Verlein gets the move done now on Paffit. Mortara is lurking in there too. And Mortara is going to go past Paffit as well. Paffit must be sitting in the car thinking, what is going on? Everyone, everyone has gone past him. He was fourth, and now he's down to 13th already. Whoa, there's a late one from Vern up the inside of uh, Alex Lynn for sixth position. He threw that in from miles behind. Buemi is using his fan boost in third place, trying to attack the cost of a second. And he's up the inside and through. Sebastian Buemi uses his fan boost and takes second place away from Antonio Felix da Costa. And there's Vern again. This time on Daniel Apt. Carving through the field now, jean Eric Vern. It's Buemi in second, it's da Costa in third, Vern in fourth. So Vern's now got past Stoffel van Dorn as well. What has happened there? Vern again! This time up the inside of Da Costa. But one year ago, it was Daniel Apt who dominated for Audi in Berlin. They haven't had the strength that they had last year this season, but it is a victory for Audi again in Berlin. Lucas de Grassi wins. That win for Lucas pushes him up to second place in the championship, with jean eric Verne's third place finish meaning he keeps the top spot. A clear order is beginning to appear in the championship, with the top five drivers starting to pull away from the rest of the pack, heading into round 11 of 13. We caught up with Pascal as he returned to his garage after the race. Yeah, so we've done our weekend, uh, finished the race in uh, P10 which is not great, uh, didn't have the speed all weekend, really uh, struggling a bit. So hopefully you can have a better one next time in Bern and looking forward to that one. That's nearly it, but before we go, let's check out what's been happening on social media. Lucas de Grassi posted this pic from his son's first ever grid visit. Looks like baby Leo brought good luck for Papa de Grassi. Andre Lauderer posted this selfie with his teammate Jeb at the Big Cat Sanctuary in the UK. Stay tuned for the next episode of Street Racers to find out what that's all about. And finally, Effie tweeted this clip from the post-race press conference in Berlin, where Jeb and Lucas were questioning the pace of the Nissan car. You know, when they are quicker than you, they don't mind. When they are behind, they cry like you cannot believe. Well, we had a clear question, if you see the clear yeah. pattern of the team in qualifying I think, and I think the, the drivers of the Nissans are really good in qualifying. <laughs> Maybe, and then they are, the car is not efficient in the race. <laughs> what about that? We've really got to go now, but make sure you catch the next episode of Street Racers, where we'll be checking out Nico Rosberg's Green Tech Festival, analyzing that epic Berlin race, and looking ahead to the next e -Prix in Bern. Stay charged, street racers. Yeah.